What is affiliate marketing and how does it actually work? This is one of the very first questions I had whenever I started blogging back in 2016 and I heard that people could make money online and they could do all these cool things with this or that. And I'm like, yeah, but how does it work? Can you just tell me how someone like me who didn't have a product, didn't have a service, I wasn't offering anything of value to other people other than my content, how do I make money online? Well, affiliate marketing, played such a big role in me making my first few dollars. And in today's video, I'm gonna explain to you exactly how it works and even show you how to set up a campaign so you can get started right away. Let's get right to it. Hey y'all, Crystal here today. And if you have been watching this channel all about creating content, then you're like, how do I actually make money? Like I love recording videos, I love creating podcast episodes, I even like putting posts out on social media, how do I make money? This is the million dollar question, right? And so today I wanted to show you the steps that I typically will go through whenever I'm planning an affiliate marketing campaign and I'm actually gonna show you the results that I had from a recent campaign that didn't go so well. I know, it's always fun to share the, I made $100,000 doing this, but um, what about the failed ones? I'm gonna share with you one that I realized was not a good fit for my audience, but it's a great example of why it's important to measure any time you are running affiliate promotions and affiliate campaigns so you know what works and what didn't. So before we cover the five questions I want you to think about before you ever start running affiliate campaigns, we have to really talk about affiliate marketing. So at its core, affiliate marketing is simply you promoting someone else's product, service, program, an event, like there's so many different ways that I have used affiliate marketing since I got started on my journey. I got started with Amazon affiliates and that was really cool because I could just tell people about books and products that I love and I made a few bucks doing that. I've also been an affiliate of products that I love as well as services, programs, and some things that are very high ticket coaching programs that I have been able to really sustain a lot of my business based on my affiliate revenue. Actually, last year, I had so much of my main revenue coming from affiliate marketing campaigns, which is why I think it's important we talk about this because I wanna show you how I set these up. So there are five questions that I always take into consideration whenever I'm running a campaign through an affiliate promotion. So let's dive into those now. Number one, and the first thing that I consider whenever I'm starting an affiliate promotion is, well, what is the product or service, right? You have to make this very clear. I actually have an entire Asana project that is dedicated to the companies that I work with through affiliate programs. It's actually really helpful because it helps me kind of keep track of what I wanna promote throughout the year. Have I really leaned heavily on one specific type of product or service? And I just really like being organized. If you've watched this video right here, all about my love for Asana projects, then you know it's what I I use to keep my content calendar very organized, but it's really important that you can decide on the product that you're going to use. You can't just say, I wanna run an affiliate program and then just grab something out of thin air. I think it's really important that you choose a product, an event, a book, any of those things that are really aligned with who you are as a content creator, but also it'll add value to your audience. You can feel when something's misaligned, when somebody's promoting something on their podcast or their YouTube channel, that just doesn't feel right for the audience. And maybe it could have a huge commission. Like on the back end, people are like, I'm just gonna push this. Even if it's not a good fit for my audience, I'm just gonna push it out there. We can feel that as your audience, so don't do that. Make sure that what you're offering to your podcast listeners, your YouTube people, or even people on your email list are, it's just gonna be aligned. It's gonna be a good fit because your promotion really depends on making sure that what you're offering to your audience through the affiliate campaign is going to add value to them. So that's step number one. Decide which programs, products, and services that you want to offer in your affiliate campaign. Number two is you have to decide when are you going to promote this and how long will your promotion be? 
Now, you might be saying, well, can I just put stuff out there and it's out there indefinitely? Absolutely. I mean, I have YouTube videos and podcast episodes where I've talked about different products that I'm an affiliate for, and that will live on in perpetuity. But what I'm talking about is being really strategic with how you're going to go about your affiliate promotions. So what I will tell content creators is decide on a two to six week period that you're going to heavily promote throughout the year. Maybe you have evergreen stuff that's living out there, but what if you treated an affiliate campaign just like you were launching your own product or service? This is, I think, the main reason why I have been so successful with affiliate marketing is because I do, I go above and beyond and I treat my affiliate promotions like I'm launching one of my own programs and it really shows. So decide when are you gonna launch and how long will that launch be whenever you go about doing an affiliate promotion. Then step number three is, how are you going to measure results? This is something that's often overlooked from people that are just getting started with affiliate marketing because you don't know. I didn't know to do this. I just kind of was like, hey, I'll start putting links out there and hope that this works. It's not a good strategy. That's never a good strategy, but it's what I did, right? You live, you learn, you know, you're here watching this video, hopefully not making all the mistakes that I have made and you can learn from what I have done in the past but you need to have something that's measurable. Now, if you're asking, well, what could I measure an affiliate promotion? Well, you can measure clicks, you can measure how many downloads of a particular piece of dynamic content, which we're gonna talk about that here in a second. You could look at how many views you got on a specific YouTube video in a given amount of time. This is another reason why it's important to look at the time frame so you can measure those results. I'm really big on numbers, really big on data, and it's also important to understand how many sales you are getting. Do you see where we're going with this? Because if you know how many views, listens, clicks, all those things, then you can actually calculate the conversion, which is a sale, if you have all of this information. So conversion rate is something that I use every time I go into a new campaign because what I typically do is I will do a promotion and then maybe I'll do it again in six months. Maybe I do it once a year, but I can look back at all my information that I did from the previous year and say, okay, I can expect that if I have at least this many views, listens, downloads, clicks, then my conversion rate will be about this much and I would make this much money based on how much my commission is as an affiliate of that program. I know lots of math, lots of numbers, but it's important to have this information going into your first affiliate campaign or your next affiliate campaign so that you can be even more successful in the future. Do you see where we're going? We're looking at this from the long term, and I want you to have successful affiliate campaigns from here on out. And step four that you need to think about is which platforms will you use to promote this campaign? Now, I always love the idea of using all of your platforms, using your podcast, using your YouTube channel, using your website, using social media, using your email list. Like those are the five main channels that I will typically use whenever I'm doing an affiliate promotion, but you could get creative and you may have other in-person events that you're doing or an actual live virtual event that you wanna say, hey, like I'm gonna throw out my promotion during that time. Now. Be cautious if you are part of someone else's event as a guest, you don't wanna do that. Don't be spamming other people with links that they can go, like don't do that, that's not cool. But if it is your own platform, by all means, like promote everywhere whenever you're doing an affiliate campaign. But what I'm gonna share with you here in a second is I actually did a specific affiliate promotion on just my podcast because I wanted to measure the results from just my podcast audience because that is a little bit different than what it looks like on my YouTube channel versus my email list versus my social media. So I was just getting a little geeky and I wanted to measure specifically for my podcast listeners. But it is really, really important for you to decide going into your affiliate promotion knowing, okay, I'm gonna promote it on this specific platform, maybe not this one, or maybe that audience isn't ready for this type of program or event or book or whatever the thing is, is that you're promoting, but you wanna decide where are you going to promote your affiliate launch? And then step number five or question number five to ask yourself is, 
What does success look like? Now, if you are brand new to affiliate marketing, success should look like you just getting through an entire campaign without quitting. That's what success should look like. I remember whenever I ran my first affiliate marketing campaign on Amazon, I was like, okay, I'm gonna put these links out and you know, it's gonna be on my blog and if I get a sale, then that means it works. And that means that this, you know, it's, it, it's hurrah, <laughs> I made it happen. And that's really all I was going for. And once that first sale came in, I was like, oh, this actually works. I can make money doing this while I'm building out other products and services of my own to promote within my online business. So I think it's really important for you to decide, does success look like getting two sales? Does success look like getting 500 sales? Does it mean making $500? Does it mean making $20 or $20,000? Like there's so many variations of what success can look like, but you have to decide what that's gonna be for you. Now, I wanna go into, like I said, I have a little behind the scenes of a recent promotion I did on the Profit Podcast. This is my weekly podcast you can check out here, but I did a recent affiliate promotion for StreamYard. I am a proud partner with them, and I've been using StreamYard since early 2020. I love their product so, so much, and it's why I wanted to do a specific marketing campaign on my podcast using dynamic content. Now, if you're like, Crystal, I don't have a podcast or I have no idea what dynamic content is. Well, if you're interested, I encourage you to watch this video right here. It is a feature that I use on Buzzsprout, which I'm also a proud partner with Buzzsprout. They're my hosting site and I'm able to insert audio files at the very beginning or at the very end of my podcast episodes. And I'm just gonna show you more about what this actually looks like, but make sure you go check out the resources that I'm gonna have linked below whenever it comes to using dynamic content on your podcast and in your content. But let's go to the computer and I'm gonna show you how this recent campaign worked out for me. So what I have pulled up here in front of me is my content calendar for the Profit Podcast. I use Asana, which is my project management tool, as well as Google Sheets to really keep track of when my content is gonna go live, as well as I use it to plan the different aspects of when shows are happening and all the little details that I need to know as a content creator. But this is what I wanted to show you. This column right here is my dynamic content column. And what I will do is whenever I know that I have a specific promotion coming up, I will go ahead and fill out this information, even if it's months in advance. I know, oh, there's a big promotion coming up in September, 2022. So I went ahead and like I dropped in something very specific that's gonna be happening at that time. And I wanna reserve the dynamic content space to talk about that promotion. If you don't plan for it, it's not gonna happen. So this is why I love a Google Sheet to do this. But as you can see here, I publish episodes twice a week. So this was, it looks like it's a four week time period because it's four different episodes, but it because it's twice a week, it was four episodes over two weeks. I know, it gets a little confusing. But you can see it was really a 10 day period when this went live. So it wasn't even a two full weeks because I took this down the Friday after uh, it was on uh, February 11th, I took it down because I wanted to measure everything. Again, measuring is so, so, so important. So I knew that this was happening, here it is, and I'm actually gonna go into Buzzsprout and show you the information uh, that happened before we get to the actual conversions of how everything works. So let's go to Buzzsprout and I'm gonna show you my dynamic content library. So here we are in Buzzsprout. Again, if you wanna know more about how to use this, make sure you check the links below. I'm gonna have all the resources to how I actually use this. Um, I don't have any dynamic content right now because I recently pulled this down and um, I'm giving my audience a break because I don't always have ads running all the time because I don't want them to get sick of them. But what I'm gonna do is go down to right here. This is the ad that I ran. It was a free 14 day trial of StreamYard, which it is, it's offered to all of the affiliates that are in their program. But what I did is I catered it to my audience. So you can see I have an ad here that's one minute and 18 seconds and it was applied to the pre-roll of all of my episodes. 
This is the beautiful thing about dynamic content. It went all the way back to episode one and I have over 300 podcast episodes, but this specific piece of audio for this ad was placed at the very beginning of all 330 plus episodes that I have out there. Pretty cool, right? And so in a 10 day period, this was listened to more than 4,222 times. That's a pretty big deal. And y'all, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't have thousands of listeners. I have hundreds of listeners, but I don't have thousands of listeners. So this tells me that people heard this a lot. And it was like, okay, then I, I should have had huge numbers, right? This is my assumption going into this whenever I saw, oh my gosh, like that's a lot. Let me go check my StreamYard dashboard and see what kind of check I'm gonna cash later because this is amazing. It's not how it worked out, but you know, there's a little foreshadowing, but it's really cool to see how many people listen to this particular ad. So let's go into StreamYard and I'm gonna show you how I measure the actual conversions from having this number right here, the 4,222 downloads. That is the first starting number. And then now we're gonna go grab the conversions. So here we are in StreamYard. Now this is their partner dashboard, which is a little bit different than just using your referral code. If you are a, uh, you already use StreamYard, then you have a referral code, but you actually have to apply to get into the partner program. I'll leave a link to it below this video if you're interested in applying. But um, yeah, this was, less than stellar, y'all. <laughs> For 4,000 listens this month, which is when I ran the campaign, was in February, I got 21 clicks and two signups and no customers. So what can we tell from this information? Now again, I, I, I started this whole video and let y'all know, I'm gonna let you know about something that did not work out well for me. Well, what this tells me is that my podcast audience isn't really into streaming because that's what StreamYard is for. It's for making live broadcasts, like the ones that I do every single Tuesday. If you have not joined us, I go live on my YouTube channel every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central. Please come join us, hang out with us. We like to party over there on Taco Tuesdays. But it, it just tells me that it wasn't a right fit for them. I've had other campaigns where I've made thousands of dollars in a very short amount of time this was not one of those campaigns. And I think that if I were to boil everything down, it's because they're interested in podcasting and creating pre-recorded videos and content and working on their website, not streaming. So again, it all comes down to tweaking and really understanding who your audience is and what will be of the most value to them. That is really what it all comes down to when it comes to affiliate marketing and having successful campaigns. But I wanna know, what questions do you have? I'm sure you have lots of questions after this failed demonstration of my recent affiliate launch, but I have had some really, really successful ones, like ones where I made $12,000 in less than 24 hours, which was really, really cool. So let me know if you wanna know more about affiliate marketings and the really successful campaigns that I've had and what other questions you have about getting started. But that's all I have for you today. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up, letting us know that you liked it and you wanna see more content like this. Make sure you subscribe below so you don't miss our future videos all about creating content and having the right strategies to help your online business be successful. Check out these other videos right here, all about content creation and great strategies. And as always, remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere.